hour-long the coronation on BBC One saw the Queen reunited with the Crown. The nanny one-year-old watched as an aide in white gloves brought the headwear to her. Viewers were delighted that she immediately manhandled the historic item. Queen smiled as prodded precious jewels on it including a 120-carat sapphire. The show marks the 65th anniversary in June of the Queen's coronation in 1953. Viewers watching the Queen as she was reunited with her coronation crown in a special program for the BBC last night were left aghast after the monarch was seen rotating it, grabbing the ermine and even gently flicking a pearl. After a white-gloved aide put the historic 1661 crown in front of the monarch, the nanny one-year-old wasted no time in getting to grips, literally, with it, leaving those watching at home shocked at her relaxed approach to one of the country's most important artifacts. The hour-long show for BBC One, which celebrates 65 years since the Queen came to the throne, left some viewers suggesting that the Queen was poking and prodding the crown as she discussed wearing it when she first came to the throne at Westminster Abbey in 1953. Scroll down for video when the unwieldy crown, made in 1661, is placed before her, the narrator reminds viewers that only three people in the world, the Queen herself, the Archbishop of Canterbury and the crown jeweler, can touch it without gloves on. Judging by the outpouring of surprise on social media, viewers were clearly expecting the Queen to have a more reverent approach to the crown. On, Charlie Proctor wrote, the nation gasps in horror as the Queen manhandles the Queen jostles with the crown the coronation. In a remarkably warm and chatty interview, the Queen also reveals how, during her coronation at Westminster Abbey in 1953, her elaborate gown got stuck on the carpet pile and for a moment she wasn't able to move. She is at her sparkling best, relaxed and full of gems of information about the treasures that are hers to show off. The program was the fruit of a collaboration between the BBC and the Royal Collection Trust, guardian of more than a million antiques and works of art on behalf of the nation, which tells the stories of some of its greatest treasures in a series of programs over the next few weeks. Unusually, to mark the 65th anniversary in June of her coronation, the Queen agreed to appear on camera at Buckingham Palace with a selection of her crown jewels. The treasures were brought from the Tower of London to be filmed as she reminisced with royal commentator Alastair Bruce. Faced with her diamond-encrusted imperial state crown, which she wore at the end of her coronation and until recently used for most state openings of Parliament, the Queen has an almost comically hostile expression as she unexpectedly pulls it towards her. Explaining how the crown was remodeled after George VI's coronation, she says, you see, it's much smaller isn't it? Mr. Bruce notes that it was huge when her father was crowned. The Queen replies, yes very unwieldy. She adds, fortunately my father and I have about the same sort of shaped head. But once you put it on it stays I mean it just remains on. Crown jewels hidden from the Nazis in a biscuit tin. Asked if she has to keep her head very still while wearing the two pounds five ounces crown, the Queen replies, yes. And you can't look down to read the speech you have to take the speech up. Because if you did your neck would break, it the crown would fall off. Laughing, she adds, so there are some disadvantages to crowns but otherwise they're quite important things. The Queen, who was 27 when she was crowned, is also shown nonchalantly flicking four pearls hanging underneath the arches of the crown. Two of the pearls are said to have belonged to Mary Queen of Scots and to have been bought by Elizabeth Lye. The Queen says with a sad laugh, they were.